Well, hey everybody, Jimmy here, and special thanks and congratulations to Danny Smith and Anthony Santo, our winners on last week's giveaway. The way that you can be entered into this week's giveaway is make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel, comment and like this week's show, and that gets you entered in to win uh, some expandable broadheads, the dead meat broadheads from our friends at G5, a really good product there. So if you want to be entered in to win that, you can uh, make sure that you subscribe, like and comment, and hopefully you enjoy this week's show. Michigan Outdoors Online is brought to you in part by, by Tri-County Logging. Experienced in sustainable forestry practices, Tri-County Logging can help you manage your property by keeping your woods healthy and generate income. Serving southern and mid-Michigan for nearly 50 years, tricountylogging.com. Hi everyone, welcome to Michigan Out of Doors. I'm Jenny Silek, and we've been working on an all new show for you this week. I'll introduce you to a Saginaw Bay angler who spent his birthday chasing after walleyes there, but it wasn't just any birthday, he turned 104 years old. You won't wanna miss that story, we had a riot out there. And Jimmy and Jordan are gonna talk about something that's a little controversial here in our state right now. Well, that's right, Jenny. We do have a couple more stories on this week's show. One of the hot topics right now here in the state of Michigan in the outdoor world is the proposed expansion of Camp Grayling, which would impact over 150,000 acres of state property. So we're going to be talking about this for weeks and months to come. But on this week's show, we're going to sit down with the anglers of the Asabo and kind of get their viewpoint on how this would impact sportsmen around the state. Lots of good stories on this week's show. We also have time for a brand new recipe, so make sure you stay tuned. I'm Jimmy Gretzinger, and it's time for Michigan Out of Doors. From the first spring rains to the soft summer breeze Dancing on the pine forest floor The autumn colors catch your eyes Here come the crystal winter skies It's Michigan, Michigan out of doors What a beautiful day in the woods Someday our children all will see This is their finest legacy the wonder and the love of Michigan As the wind comes whispering through the trees, the sweet smell of nature's in the air, from the Great Lakes to the quiet stream, shining like a sportsman's dream, it's a love of Michigan we all share. Michigan Out of Doors is presented by, by Country Smokehouse, a sportsman's meat processor and Michigan destination since 1988, offers a variety of homemade smoked meats and Michigan-made products in store and online. The Country Smokehouse features an outdoor barbecue and bar. Details at countrysmokehouse.com. By Green Mark Equipment. Green Mark Equipment is a John Deere dealership network in southwest Michigan and northern Indiana. Green Mark provides sales and services to farmers, commercial businesses, large property owners, and homeowners. Information about pricing and products available can be found online at greenmarkequipment.com. By G5 Outdoors, makers of the Quest and Prime Bows, manufactured and designed in Memphis, Michigan. G5 offers a line of archery bows, broadheads, and accessories on the web at g5outdoors.com. This moment brought to you by DTE's Clean Vision. So today, <laughs> we have, uh, we're celebrating a 104th birthday for my good friend Joe. Uh, Joe and his family have been fishing with me for about six years now. Uh, this is their third trip this season. And today is actually uh, Joe's 104th birthday. So Joe has actually been fishing in Michigan for 100 years. So uh, lots of stories, lots of fun. Uh, looking forward to, to having him out here. You know, it, one of the things about you know, what I do is I get to meet some really cool people. Um, and obviously, you know, when you're 104 years old, I mean, you, you're pretty cool, right? So uh, I was excited that they planned this right exactly on his birthday. So looking forward to a good day on Saginaw Bay celebrating uh, uh, 104th birthday. I don't know if I'm going to get there, but uh, it'll be fun to be with, be with Joe and the guys today. There you go. Okay, thank you, sir. Good morning. <laughs> Thanks. Happy birthday. Good to see you. Yeah. Oh, gosh. <laughs> Morning. 
Well, we're on anyway. <laughs> That's right. I don't know. So we're heading, uh, heading out of Limit Beach Marina right now on the west side of Saginaw Bay. We're going to head about 13 miles east uh, over to the west side, north side of Callahan Reef. Uh, a little shallow water structure over there. Fish are kind of moving in and out of that structure. We've got a lot of perch starting to move into shallow weeds, so there's a lot of food there. Um, we're going to head over there and try that shallow water bite. There is a deep water bite going, but deep water is a little tougher because you've got to really get your lures in the right spot. So I like to fish shallow water if I can. Because now if I put my baits, you know, 12 feet of water, I put my baits down six, seven feet, every fish is going to see it as opposed to trying to get out in 24, 25 feet of water and trying to figure out where those fish are in the water column. So uh, if I can fish shallow, I like to fish shallow. So we're going to head over. There's a good bite on the east side and we're going to head over to that side and see if we can get them. All right, Joey, the trap is set, buddy. We just got to yeah. wait for a mouse to swim by now, but we got the <laughs> trap set. So yeah. just got to wait. Well, Joe didn't have to wait long for the first fish of the day to take our offering. He likes to sit on the seat cushion right on top of the live well towards the back of the boat so he can see the planer boards and rods and stay right in the middle of all the action as it's happening. This first fish was a feisty pike that gave Joe a nice battle. Joining the birthday boy today were his daughter Teresa Hoverman and her husband Glenn and good family friends Jerry and Glenna Stafford and their daughter Paula. My husband Matt joined us today too and was acting as Lance's first mate. Some of Joe Reha's earliest fishing memories are from the 1920s when he and his brother would take a break from their chores and sneak off to a nearby riverbank near the town of Freeland for some perch fishing. 10, 12 years old we fished with a cane pole out on Pine River, over there. Fishing and, for what? And there was at least 150 people along the bank fishing right alongside of you. Wow. And we had cane poles. We used using cane poles. We were catching perch. Well, I like fishing, but I also like hunting. Okay. I've hunted for 50 some years in one spot. Well, I like fishing because. Hey, you can sit there. I like perch fishing. And we, walk, we fished for walleye before the perch come in. We always fished for, for, for walleye. Yeah, last year we started walleye fishing for Lance. And he's the nice, best fisherman I ever fished with. Hang a nice guy. He's a good captain. Uh, yeah, he'll do anything for you. You're going to get on this pontoon a lot easier, walk right on it. A boat, you got to go over the, over the sides, then you got a seat you sit on, but after, it's all right after you get over there, but you got to get in on that seat first to go over the side of the boat. Right. Fish on. Close one here. This is really close. Right out the end of the boat. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh, hold on here. I'm trying to help you, Joe. There we go. Chaos. Keeper. That's a little one, man. The first few walleyes weren't monsters, but they were that perfect size for some great table fare. In this part of Saginaw Bay, the daily limit is eight walleye per person with a minimum size of 13 inches. The first couple of fish in the boat measured just over 14 inches and went into the live well. Paula stepped up to bring in the next fish as the wind and waves started building. Joe's daughter Teresa says that fishing has always been a big part of her dad's life. My dad, he loves to fish. He fishes, I can't tell you when we were kids, he would be gone on the ice. He would ice fish, fish with his best friend Dick Carpenter because he, Dick had the boat and he would go twice a week, three times a week. They fish sometimes on the, in the winter time on the Tibidawassee River. And if anybody knows the Tibidawassee, it flows. They would take rope and tie off to a tree and walk <laughs> out there and they'd fish for walleye. Fishing was like a little vacation because they never got to go on vacation when they were younger. So fishing was one of the most, you know, they got to go for the day or maybe for four or five hours and then he got, he got to go. But he just loves to fish. Fish is one of his things. And then when he got older, my brother and him, Dwayne Reha, they bought a boat together. And my brother would take him out here on the bay fishing for walleye. 
and that he just enjoyed that. But as he got older, it was too hard for him to get on the boat, so then we came here with Lance Valentine. I was just scrolling through some of the fishing, you know, guides and stuff, and I came across Lance, and he was one of the only ones that had this kind of a boat. And for my dad, this boat here is one of the best because he can get on and off so easy, and there's a lot of room on it, and it's just perfect for him. Captain Lance had the fish jumping in the boat left and right today. Although he makes it look easy, fishing walleye on Saginaw Bay in late August can be quite challenging. So we're kind of at the tail end of uh, summer here. We're not quite into the transition from summer to fall, but you know we're getting some cooler nights. So the, the days aren't getting quite as warm, so we're scrubbing a little bit of water temperature. So we're kind of right in that not really good summer peak fishing, but we're not quite too. Obviously, we're a couple, you know, six weeks away from fall fishing. You know, but the fish are, they're, they're still in the places they've been in the summertime, but the bite's a little, I don't want to say off, but it's a little tougher right now. Um, you got to remember, we've got max amount of bait fish in the water right now we're going to have all year. So these fish don't need to eat artificial baits. Um, and we're not quite cold enough water to signal, hey, it's fall time, we really need to feed up. So we're kind of in that, you know, post-summer, kind of, you know, end of summer, early post-summer uh, calendar period that makes it tough for fishing because there's fish in all, all you know, on Saginaw Bay here, these fish can be six foot deep or they can be 25 foot deep. So there's a lot of fish spread out over a lot of different areas, a lot of different patterns and a lot of bait makes uh, fishing a little tougher, but I'm expecting we'll get 10, 12 fish today. So uh, looking forward to a good day. Beautiful weather, uh, at least until the end of our trip. Uh, we got some rain coming this afternoon, but we should be able to get over to where we're going and uh, get some fish and, and, and have a good day. Well, the captain and the weatherman were a little off on their predictions today. We fished right through a rainstorm that came eight hours earlier than expected, but those 10 to 12 fish Lance predicted quickly turned into 34 fish. An amazing morning on the bay. You got everybody all well coached, huh? I'm oh, working on it. I've got a very specific routine, so, you know, it's, it's funny. You know, one of the things we talk about a lot, a lot of, a lot of anglers talk about is releasing yeah, their planer boards so they don't get tangled and we've got a fish we got five boards out this fish is on the outside board and we didn't have to release anything we're never going to get tangled so having a routine getting everything set up right rod holders in the right place getting your lines you know the right depth of lures in the right place you should never ever have to release a board so um we got what, fish number 14 on here and we've had them on the inside and the outside in the middle and the close ones so uh it's been a good morning we're out here fishing probably less than an hour and we're Bring in number 14, so I'll, I'll take that. <laughs> well, Joe, what do you think? I think it's pretty decent fishing. <laughs> the weather is not with us, but, but uh, fishing is, is, is good. Awesome. We're catching one foot here every, every minute. Or two. Fishing is good and life is great. It was truly an honor to spend Joe's 104th birthday with him, doing what he loves. He battled a storm, reeled in more fish than he expected to, and added yet another memory to his adventures on the water. Happy birthday to Joe Reha, a true Michigan man through and through. Well, like I mentioned at the beginning of the show, one of the hot topics here in the state of Michigan is the proposed expansion of Camp Grayling. Now, this is something that will be taking place over the next weeks and months to come, and we're going to have lots of different interviews with people on all sides of the issue. But on this week, we're going to sit down with the anglers of the Asable to see what they think the impact would be for sportsmen here in the great state of Michigan. Well, we are here today, literally on the banks of the Asable River with Joe Hemming from the Asable Anglers. Uh, before we get into what we really came here to talk to you about, Joe, tell me a little bit about your, your the group here, the fishermen. What do you guys do, and, and kind of what's the history of your organization? Okay, uh, sure, Jimmy. Um, it's Anglers of the Asable. We were founded in 1987. We're about 1,200 members strong. Oh, okay. um, our membership is located around the country and actually uh, overseas too, so wow. uh, quite the base. And our mission is to preserve, protect the Asaba watershed um, as well as the Manistee. Mm. And um, that's what we do and we, we're, our mission is to preserve it for future generations of fly fishers. And we take that mission very seriously. Mm. So we spend a lot of time putting habitat in the river, 
uh, monitoring, uh, doing fish studies, um, and keeping an eye on what's going on in the state that might impact our watershed. Well, that's a perfect jumping off point. So viewers may or may not know what's going on here, and that's why we're here with Joe to kind of explain the Camp Grayling, which is not too far from here, is almost 150,000 square acres of, or 150 square miles, right? I, it, it's actually um, 231 square miles. Okay. So uh, that's yeah. what they currently have. And which I think is like 150,000 acres of land. It's a, it's a big, it's big, big it's chunk. It's big. big. And they are looking to expand potentially uh, by, by doubling their size. So just walk me through a little bit. What is going on? How did this thing start? And kind of where are we at in the process? Well, I would say to you, Jimmy, is that the, the plan is to add on another 253 square miles. So that would more than double what the current footprint is. Um, I would want to stress that um, we, we as anglers strongly support the National Guard and its mission. Uh, we truly respect the vital, um, the vital mission that they have in this state and in the country and we appreciate that and we respect that. But right now with the size that they have, we believe that's more than enough for them to carry on that mission. Uh, this is, it's a huge proposed expansion. And unfortunately, it's impacting, in a, to a large extent, this proposed expansion, the Asaba watershed, the Manistee watershed. I mean, these are two of the finest trout rivers uh, east of the Mississippi, and, and they're fragile. Mm. So um, this, is, this is causing us a lot of uh, concern. Um, we, we also recognize that the uh, DNR, who is looking at this proposed expansion, they have a statutory mission to, um, they need to protect and conserve this watershed, um, foster and encourage the protection, propagation of game and fish, and quite frankly, um, this proposal that they're considering is not consistent with their mission. So we have a big problem with it. Well, I think that's kind of interesting too, because when I first heard about this, with they wanting to add 162,000 acres, um, that's not a, there's no monetary, you know, I thought when I first heard about it, that the state was gonna get 100 million or $200 million or something like that, but explain that situation. No, no, as I understand it, there, um, Zero dollars, right? There's zero dollars that, that ultimately are realized out of this. So they, they, they call it a, uh, what it would be a lease. It, it's really a management agreement mm. between the National Guard and the DNR. So this is, this is not about, you know, I'm going to lease you land and, and you're going to pay me money for that. That's, that's not what this is. Yeah. And so what is, now they have, some proposed buffers around the rivers that, that, that they would potentially not go too close to them? Or can you explain any, any of that? They're, they're talking about that as part of the proposal that they would have uh, setbacks um, from the rivers as a buffer zone. Okay. But um, you're, you're talking about access to the river through the land to, to get to these places. Um, they, um, in fact, they, uh, we had to interrupt a, a, a fishing trip here a couple of days ago because they were training on the Manistee River, crossing it in rafts, mm. and and so there is an impact. Yeah. Um, you know, buffer zone or no buffer zone. And do you know what the time frame is on when a decision is going to be made, and, and who makes that decision? Well, the decision to proceed further is in the hands of the director of the DNR. Okay. The timeline um, we've been told is that they're going to. They're looking at it right now, whether to proceed further with studying the proposal by, uh, and if they decide to do that, they would then inventory the land, mm -hmm. see what kind of land is involved, the buffer zones that would need to be involved, There's maybe certain land that would have to be pulled out of the expansion because that land was purchased with uh, trust fund money and is not appropriate uh, mm -hmm. to be, um, turning it over to the uh, National Guard. So they would have to go through that whole process. Okay. So it's, a, it's as I understand it, it's a very lengthy process, but 
where we're at right now, and which is what's so critical, is the decision whether to even undertake that study. Gotcha. And we're saying, no, don't do it. Mm. it. This is not the appropriate place to do this. Yeah. Uh, there, there are other places in the country that uh, could uh, accommodate this enormous expansion that they're considering and, and do it there and not impact um, adversely these, these special watersheds of the Manistee and Asabo. Uh, so Joe, I know I have done a turkey hunt on the current uh, Camp Grayling base a few years back, and so I know some of their property is open from time to time to sportsmen to use. Um, is that, would that be the same situation on this new expanded area, or where are we at with that? That's how it's being proposed, is that it, it, there would only be certain times of the year that they would be training and that the other times would be um, sports people would be allowed on, onto the land, recreational users. But I think you're gonna find people in the area that um, are upset with uh, the access that they now have, that mm. there are times that they're denied when they wanna be on the land. And so they already got a problem with, with as it currently is, so now we're kind of opening up Pandora's box to more than doubling that land. And it, it's kind of a um, unknown uh, area in terms of how much is the access going to be denied. We don't know. And I guess I would add on, that's what would, we would be told what it is today that what that about in five down. years, right. 10 years from now? We don't know. Well, you're even talking property values. I have a friend of mine who has a cabin that would be right on the border of some of these new, you know, expanded property or their their footprint that would go right up to where they're, you know, I even think property values would be impacted. Oh, I, I think property values would be hugely impacted. Mm -hmm. The the ownership of land, but property owners up and down the river can, uh, it, it is a large part of the tax base here in the area. And if that gets adversely affected because property values go down because your window panes are rattling, um, you know, the noise hmm. and sounds, uh, which we already have, yeah. um, that is absolutely going to affect property values and it won't be good. Hmm. Well, it's a big topic. I know we've got, I think they're hoping to make a decision by the end of next year is what some of the stuff that I've read. I don't know if that's true or not, but it's a big topic and I appreciate you sitting down with us and thanks for your time. Thanks, Jimmy. I enjoyed it. We will be sitting down with more sportsman's groups as well as a representative from the National Guard. This is a big topic and we will keep you informed. Well, we're here once again with Jim Wood. We're here in Mount Pleasant. Jim, tell me a little bit about your new place here. Uh, Woodshop Social located uh, Mount Pleasant, right off 127, right on campus. Nice. Uh, new American cuisine, fun, hip atmosphere where, you know, we can finally socialize again. Yeah, well, we're happy to be here and we are doing now, to the untrained eye, this to me looked a little bit like perch, but this is not perch. What are we cooking here today? This, is, in my opinion, is a lot better than perch. Really? This is rock it's bass. a bold statement. Rock bass? Yeah. Okay. People get, think that's weird. You get a cold, <laughs> deep lake where they're full of, of crawfish and these things gorge themselves on it all day and they're awesome. I was told my entire life that they don't taste good until I tasted it for the first huh. time. Rock Years bass. ago we did it, we did a, an episode with this. I urge you to try it. Okay. Well walk me through, what are we going to do here today? Because so, this is a sandwich at the end of the deal here. Yeah, we're going to make a sandwich. You don't have okay. to use rock bass. You can use perch, walleye, trout, bluegill, crappie, whatever it is you have. Okay. Um, and we're going to kind of make a combination of two of my favorite sandwiches. So a po' boy. Okay. Which down in the south is traditionally made with shrimp or fish. Yep. And then there's also what's known as a uh, Italian hot beef sandwich, which is um, sliced beef and giardinera, which giardinera is basically a pickled Italian pickled vegetables that are packed in oil. Wow. And we're gonna make kind of a gia, uh, giardinera mayonnaise with a little Cajun spice. So it's woo. Yeah. <laughs> and we're gonna dredge it in um, potato starch. So we'll get a good brown and we'll get it crispy. And I know we've cooked with this before, but the reason you like the potato flour is? It's crispier. It is crispier so than all-purpose. it's all lighter purpose. than all-purpose flour. All right, so those are done. 
All right. So the next is the fancy mayonnaise. Now it's time for the mayonnaise. Okay. We've got about a cup here. And we've got a little bit of Cajun seasoning. Nice. Green onion. And this is our Giardinera. Okay. And like I said, we've got, it can be a combination of things. This is uh, carrots, olives, green peppers, cauliflower. And they're all kind of cut up in micro, smaller pieces. And then what kind of bread are we gonna be using? So we're gonna use ciabatta today. You don't have to use ciabatta. That's just what we're gonna be using. Thanks so much for joining us this week for Michigan Out of Doors. Make sure you stick around next week. We've got a great show in store for you. We'll show you how it went out in the fields for the early goose season that happens this weekend. We'll also give you an update on the Asian carp issue here on the Great Lakes. And we'll show you a new glass bottom boat tour that you can take part in in the northern lower peninsula. If you'd like to see where we are and where we're headed next, you can always check us out online. Well, that's right, Jenny. Online is always a good way to kind of keep tabs on us. You can do that through our website or different social media platforms as well as YouTube. So lots of places you can be checking us out. Get out and enjoy what's going on here in the great state of Michigan as we get ready for fall. It's hard to believe it's just a few days away. Thanks so much for joining us this week. And if we don't see you in the woods or on the water, hopefully we'll see you right back here next week on your PBS station. Michigan Out of Doors is presented by... Do you dream of somewhere bigger than your backyard? You can get there with Greenstone. Whether you want to hunt, fish, hike, or just watch the sunset, we're ready to help you own your place in the great outdoors. To learn more, visit GreenstoneFCS.com. By Alta Equipment Company, providing sales, rentals, service, and parts because uptime matters. From earth moving to landscaping and light construction, Alta offers over 50 brands across seven Michigan locations to serve you. More information online or 844-GO-2-ALTA. Closed captioning provided by Marvo Mineral, makers of Lucky Buck, deer management products including minerals to supplement deer diets year-round to improve health and antler growth. When I want to far away, a dream stays with me night and day. It's the road that leads to my home state. I am a Michigan man. Changing seasons paint the scene like rainbow trout in a hidden stream. White-tailed deer in the tall pine trees I am a Michigan man I am, I am a Michigan man Ask where I'm from and I'll show you my hands Lord above, I love this land I am a Michigan man From the Keweenaw down to St. Joe Kalamazoo, east to Monroe To St. Marie and back again I am a Michigan man I am, I am a Michigan man That's where I'm from and I'll show you mine